Whoa! How are you? My name is Nick. How you doing? Uh, thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. You can check me out on uh, RadioMisfits.com, the Radio Misfit Podcast Network. I have two podcasts that go there. They're free. You can download them. You can subscribe. You can like them. You can share them. You can rate them. You can review them. You can be a part, and they're free. So check them out. Uh, the first one is called The Nick D Podcast, which drops every Tuesday and Friday at the Radio Misfits Podcast Network and everywhere uh, where you get your Spotify's, your Amazon's, your uh, Apple's, everywhere in the world where you can get a podcast, it's there. Just Google The Nick D Podcast. Uh, twice weekly, entertainment podcast, uh, interviews, pop culture stuff, movie reviews, uh, all kinds of great stuff. So check it out. My second podcast is called That Show Hasn't Been Funny in Years, an SNL podcast, which is all about Saturday Night Live. And it goes 48 years back. Um, sometimes I have guests, sometimes I don't. It is a complete deep dive into the world of the greatest sketch comedy show of all time. New episodes every Wednesday, all at RadioMisfits.com and wherever you get your podcasts. So check them out. They are free. You can download them. You can subscribe now. You can also hear me on the Steve Cochran Show on Fridays on WLS AM, The Big 89, 890 AM, reviewing movies and uh, talking about other stuff too. I'm the official movie critic for the Steve Cochran Show on WLS and there you go. I do these videos, I do these podcasts, I do these radio stuff, and it's all free, so you should donate to my Patreon page. We've got a few videos there that are extra, that only patrons who donate can get, and there will be more uh, bonuses there. So uh, help me out with all the free stuff I provide. It would be really cool if you kicked a little money my way, as little as 3 bucks a month. If you want to go up to 25 bucks a month, I'm not going to fight you. But donate when you can, what you can. Please do it immediately. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Go there now, I'll wait. Donate. Thank you. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Check out all my podcasts and all the others. So those are some of the elements that go into being a good sidekick, either on a TV show, especially on a radio show, of which I've had much experience working with producers who become, you know, people who contribute to the show. So I've had a lot of sidekicks, a lot of contributors to the radio shows that I've done in the 35 years that I did professional radio and hosted shows. So sidekicks are cool and they're important. I was looking online because, I, you know, as I was listening to this radio show, I was like, man, this person sucks. Let's find the good and the bad sidekicks. So the topic here is sidekicks. And, and I want to, to hear from you. You can leave your comments here on the YouTube channel. Um, I actually have a, uh, a, a phone number where you can call my voicemail because this is something that I'm going to talk about on my podcast. And if you want to contribute and have your thoughts uh, read or talked about as part of the conversation we're going to have on the podcast, on the Nick T podcast, about sidekicks coming up, I want you to contribute. So the phone number where you can leave a voicemail 24-7 for my podcasts is 773-417-6948. It's open 24 hours. You can leave your things. Who are the best sidecasts, uh, sidekicks of all time? TV, movies, radio, entertainment, anywhere, radio, whatever. Sidekicks, partners, people who, uh, who, who actually kind of like lift the lead person or are partners with the lead or partners with the host or that kind of thing. The greatest sidekicks ever or the worst sidekicks ever. 773-417-6948 or the Nick D podcast at gmail.com. So leave your comments there and I will mention them and your name and you will be a part of the conversation when we bring this up on the next episode of the Nick D podcast. So sidekicks, good, bad, indifferent, whatever, your favorites, the worst. In any uh, uh, entertainment venue, TV, movies, radio, whatever, sidekick. So, nickdpodcast at gmail.com or 773-417-6948. Leave your comments there. All right. Let's start with TV shows. Like late night, you know, uh, obviously, when you have a talk show and you have a sidekick, it's an important thing. The greatest sidekick of all time also happens to be the greatest satire slash parody slash brutal destruction of the sidekick of all time. And that is... Jeffrey Peterson, the robot skeleton, the gay robot skeleton sidekick of Greg Ferguson on The Late Late Show with Greg Ferguson. Uh, voiced and operated, the robot was voiced and operated by the great Josh Robert Thompson, who was fantastic, who's been a guest on my podcast and on my radio show many times. He's a genius. The guy's a comedic genius who can do great imitations. He's got an original crazy comic mind. He's brilliant. And um, he created this sidekick but it was created by Craig Ferguson and uh, Josh Robert Thompson to be a complete satire and a devastating parody of what you get with a late-night sidekick. Because your late-night sidekick is supposed to sit next to you and laugh at everything you say and crack a little joke here and there. The sidekick is supposed to just make the host of the show look good. And so this robot skeleton sidekick became 
a, a, a big part of the show, and in my opinion, the greatest sidekick in the history of television talk shows. So that's my favorite. But here are some other ones. Uh, going back, uh, Jar- Charlie Callis, the great weird face-making, noise-making, <laughs> that guy, uh, 70s, 60s uh, you know, uh, comedian who worked in Vegas a lot. Charlie Callis was the sidekick for Jerry Lewis when Jerry Lewis had a late-night talk show for a minute. Um, and it's as spectacular as you can imagine. Check out the Jerry Lewis show. This was on, uh, it was syndicated, but I know it appeared on, I think, uh, the Fox syndicated uh, networks or Channel 32 or something here in Chicago. Uh, and it's legendary. It's like 70s Jerry Lewis, so it's like, you know, Percocet Jerry Lewis. Um, and Charlie Callis was his sidekick. So Charlie Callis, Jerry Lewis's sidekick, insane, crazy, but awesome. Uh Regis Philbin, you know, Regis Philbin, who had like a, a roughly a 77-year career in television. You know Regis from everything. He started out as Joey Bishop's sidekick on Joey Bishop's talk show back in the 50s and into the 60s. Regis Philbin, one of the best sidekicks ever, who obviously would go on to a massive, legendary, iconic fame. But he was a great sidekick, Regis Philbin. Uh, Arthur Treacher. Arthur Treacher was the British sidekick to Merv Griffin and a couple of other people, but mostly with Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin, again, a legendary talk show host who got started in the late 50s and all the way through up to the 80s. And Merv Griffin, obviously, a, a killionaire um, who, you know, invented Wheel of... His wife invented Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy and all that stuff. Um, so Merv Griffin, Merv Griffin Enterprises, not only a sort of a legendary talk show who was uh, skewered perfectly on SCTV, um, but, yeah, Arthur Treacher was his sidekick. Arthur Treacher, also known for uh, his great fish and chips. You're old if you remember uh, the Arthur Treacher, cause, because before there was Long John Silver's, if you wanted fast food, drive through, you know, fish and chips and stuff, there was Arthur Treacher's. You're old if you remember Arthur Treacher's fish and chips. There was one on Addison, near Kedzie, right, right you know, down the block from the White Castle that's there. There used to be an Arthur Treacher's right there. All right. Great sidekick. Uh, Reggie Watts was a great sidekick on Comedy Bang Bang, you know, with, uh, 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 with Scott uh, uh, Hofferson. Uh, and so he was great there. But he was also, unfortunately, the sidekick with James Corden, who has gone down in history as one of the most fucking annoying and worst talk show hosts in the history of late night. And he, of course, took over for Craig Ferguson, which is unfortunate because you go from the best late night talk show host to the fucking worst of all time. The most annoying, pompous piece of shit. Take your little car karaoke shit and shove it up your ass. James Corden's a sack of shit. And also, stories about the way that guy acts, you know, in real life and the way he treats people, especially wait staff and managers at restaurants. The guy is a sack of shit who screams all the time. I hate the guy. Reggie Watts was, you know, I hate. The guy made money. He had a gig, a steady gig for a while doing the late night talk show with James Corden. That's the case of a sidekick being much better than the host. Uh, and then there is uh, Ed McMahon, obviously, you know, the legendary one. Ed McMahon, Johnny Carson. Um, that goes without saying. Hannibal Burris, one of the greatest sidekicks of all time on the Eric Andre show. Eric Andre show, brilliant, insane, surrealistic, uh, conflicting, uh, great sort of gag, um, you know, a prank talk show with the brilliant Eric Andre as the host. Hannibal Burris, one of the greatest sidekicks of all time on that show. Paul Schaefer and David Letterman goes without saying. David Letterman, uh, besides uh, 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 Craig Ferguson, my favorite talk show host of all time. David Letterman was huge in my life. And he came along at, at a time, you know, when I was in high school, I was like 15 when he started doing his morning show. I don't know if people remember his morning show, but he used to have a morning show on NBC every morning at 9 o'clock. Summer of 1980, I watched it every fucking day. And it was brilliant and it got canceled. And then he got his talk show, late night talk show, about a year and a half later. And obviously it goes on from there. David Letterman, I think, is the greatest late night talk show host in the history of late night talk show hosts. I love him. Paul Schaefer obviously rules. Um, Chelsea Handler had Chewy, her little nugget. Uh, loved him. Uh, you had Andy Richter, Conan O'Brien and Andy Richter. Andy Richter, brilliant, funny, and obviously went on to have sitcoms and be in movies and write stuff and make cameo appearances and do cameo appearances in movies and TV shows. He's brilliant. And he was a fantastic sidekick. For Conan O'Brien. Um, uh, Steve Higgins is the sidekick for Jimmy Fallon. Fuck both of those guys. Higgins I like because he's got such a great history with SNL and he still writes for SNL. I don't like his son very much. Um, he's part of those please don't destroy guys. Woo-hoo-hoo. 
Anyway, uh, but he's on Jimmy Fallon, and uh, as a result, I don't like him because the Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show is an abomination. Uh, Twitch, I guess, he's a thing. He's a DJ guy, and I guess he was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. I don't never watched Ellen because I don't like her, and I don't watch daytime TV. But I guess Twitch, I, I was reading an article about great sidekicks. I guess Twitch is a sidekick for Ellen? I don't fucking know. He'd play music, and she would dance, and I would vomit. Um, and then uh, Guillermo, who is the security guard slash sidekick for Jimmy Kimmel. I love Guillermo. I love Guillermo. I love all the bits they do. I think he's hilarious. I think he's a natural. I think he's a great uh, sidekick for Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, and so those are sort of the late night sidekicks that I was reading about. Then there are sidekicks that people consider uh, the best sidekicks of all time. And these are movies and TV shows, not late night talk shows, not talk shows, not radio shows where you can fucking ruin a, a radio show by being a terrible sidekick. You can do that. Trust me. You can. Uh, but there are great sidekicks in movies and TV. And these are considered some of the best. Uh, Chewbacca in Star Wars. I mean, you can't get a better sidekick than Chewbacca, right? I'm not even a Star Wars guy, and I enjoy Chewbacca. I enjoy him yelling and shit. Um... I would, do you ever see the viral video? I'm sure you have. You ever see the viral video where they put like uh, a voice over Chewbacca's voice so it sounds like ah! with him crying and screaming? You ever see that? Look it up. It's like Chewbacca crying or Chewbacca screaming like a girl. Like whenever he sees something. So it's like they took actual footage from the Star Wars movies and instead of ah! the, the, the regular Chewbacca voice, it's like ah! it's like him crying. or It's hilarious. If you've never seen it, it's hilarious. So anyway, Chewbacca. A classic sidekick for movies. Samwise, one of the greatest uh, sidekicks and, uh, and and helpers and cohorts and and partners in movie history, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Not just in the movies, but in the book. Samwise is legendary. Uh, Dr. Watson, obviously. Sherlock and Watson, obviously. Uh, Wallace and Gromit. Gromit. I love Wallace and Gromit. God, I love Wallace and Gromit. And I love everything that those guys created and all of the, 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 the animated stuff that they do. Gromit, one of the greatest sidekicks of all time. Uh, and then there is uh, people either love or hate Short Round in Temple of Doom. Well, now they love him because the motherfucker won an Oscar for Everything Everywhere All at Once, an Oscar he didn't deserve, and a movie that didn't deserve to win any of the Oscars because it's a piece of shit. Learn, people, learn. Anyway, but I enjoy Short Round in uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which is the best of the Indiana Jones movies. And there's only two good Indiana Jones movies. There are five of them, and three of them, including the new one, suck balls. But I enjoy Short Round, but I know a lot of people who don't like them. No time for love, Dr. Jones. Nice and offensive. Uh, next is Goose and Top Gun. People love Goose and Top Gun. I don't care. He died. I didn't give a fuck. Kill him. I don't care. Uh, but people enjoy uh, him. Uh, Cletus and Smokey and the Bandit, played by Jerry Reed. Now, I love that one. I love me the Cletus. I love Jerry Reed. In Smokey and the Bandit. The other movies all suck. The second one, the third one, Smokey is the Bandit, where Jerry Reed is the star. <laughs> where he plays the Bandit as the Barry Band. Anyway, but Cletus and, and Fred the dog are the greatest like partners and sidekicks ever, man. Um, Smokey and the Bandit's a motherfucking masterpiece. If you've not gone back and watched Smokey and the Bandit, it's also incredibly offensive, and I'm glad it is. If they change a the frame of that movie now... Oh, it's too offensive now. Fuck off. That movie rules. But anyway, Cletus, Jerry Reed, Smokey and the Bandit, magnificent sidekick. Um, all right, Sam and Casablanca. Yeah, please. What are you going to say about that? Fantastic. Uh, what do you got here? Oh, Cato and the Green Hornet. Uh, Bruce Lee. What are you going to say about that? You say anything about that, and I'll kick your ass. And I can't even fight. Hit Girl in the movie Kick-Ass, played by the lovely uh, Chloe Grace Moretz. She's fantastic in that movie. That was the first time when she really... Uh, I mean, I, I remember seeing her in other stuff. I remember her in 500 Days of Summer, and she was in uh, the Amityville Horror. But the first time that Chloe Grace Moretz really blew off the screen, it was when she played uh, uh, Hit Girl in Kick-Ass. So she's a great sidekick. Uh, who else do we got? Batman, Robin, Robin, great sidekick, depending on who plays him. Burt Ward's the best goddamn Robin, okay? I don't want to hear about Chris O'Donnell, or who, uh, who the fuck else? Nobody else really played him in... Uh, oh, yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt eventually became Robin in the stupid Christopher Nolan pieces of shit movies. All right. Uh, Garth in Wayne's World. People like Garth. I don't. Uh, let's move on. Silent Bob. Jay and Silent Bob. You gotta love Silent Bob. Of course, created and for himself. Kevin Smith plays him. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob. You gotta love Silent Bob. A great sidekick. Uh, Cal in Talladega Nights. John C. Riley in Talladega Nights. Fantastic sidekick. He's hilarious in that. Shake and bake, baby. Now, you gotta love him in that. John C. Riley and uh, and, and Will Ferrell and Step Brothers. 
Those guys work great together. They were hilarious, especially in Step Brothers. I love Step Brothers, one of my favorite comedies. And they work off of each other great. And as a sidekick, John C. Riley, a sidekick to Will Ferrell, fantastic. Uh, and then there is Igor in Young Frankenstein, played by the great Marty Feldman. Fantastic. Now, there are other great sidekicks and people who are partners in movies and stuff like that, but my favorite partner slash sidekick in any movie, my favorite's like second banana performance to the lead, if you will, second banana, another good way of saying it, is my favorite uh, uh, you know, sidekick character, partner character in a movie is Angelo Pappas in Point Break, played by the insane and the magnificent Gary Busey. Second banana to Keanu Reeves, him and Johnny Utah, Angelo Pappas, Johnny Utah, you know, catching those ex-president bank robber surfers, fucking amazing, the masterpiece Point Break, a master fucking piece by uh, uh, Catherine Bigelow. Yeah, Angelo Pappas is my favorite sidekick, my favorite partner in movie history, Gary Busey to Keanu Reeves. Angelo Pappas, Pappas, Angelo Pappas, punk, quarterback punk, fuck off, that movie rules. Okay. And here is a list that I found online of the worst, like the most annoying sidekicks, and I'll fly through this. Uh, yeah, okay, so made the list on the worst list, short round from Temple of Doom. So a lot of people uh, hate little... Sh- Snarf from Thundercats. I have to plead ignorance on that. Thundercats is a Saturday morning TV show that aired when I was in my, I don't know, 30s or 20s, so I didn't see it. But apparently Snarf in Thundercats, people hate that sidekick. Slimer and the real Ghostbusters, the animated Ghostbusters. I remember Slimer from the Ghostbuster movies, um, and I wasn't particularly fond of him in that because I don't like Ghostbusters very much. I like the female version of Ghostbusters, which, by the way, is the best version of Ghostbusters, and fuck you if you don't agree. But anyway, Slimer and the animated Ghostbusters, I guess he had more of a personality and he was wacky. Uh, Scrappy-Doo and Scooby-Doo. Oh, my God, Scrappy-Doo. That's like when they brought Oliver in to... uh, the Brady Bunch, and when they brought that little motherfucker, uh, the little cute kid in uh, 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 Married with Children, that little fucker, was his name Seven? I don't remember. But then they brought the cute little motherfucking kid, Married with Children. But Scr- Scrappy Do, oh my god. Anytime he came on, he'd be like, man, fuck off. Scrappy Do, terrible sidekick. Uh, and then there is Olaf and Frozen. Fuck that movie. I'm glad I don't have kids. I swear to God. If I had kids when that movie was like popular, if my kids were like four, five, six, seven, eight years old, and I had to watch that movie 15 times a day, I'm telling you right now, man. Oh, my God. Man, I would just eat the pipe. I'm telling you. Olaf. Fuck off. Um, and then there is um, Jar Jar Binks and Star Wars. Uh, you don't need to say anything about it. Uh and then there is Donkey from Shrek, which was considered one of the most annoying. Some people like the, the Donkey from Shrek. I think it's fine. I got tired of Shrek after the first movie. What are there, like eight of them now? There's a Broadway musical, and there's like eight Shrek movies. And a bit. Fuck off. Uh, and then there is um, Fergie, Judge Dredd, uh, in, in the Judge Dredd movie, uh, the Sylvester Stallone Judge Dredd movie. It's played by Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider, by the way, has become this... Has, is he nuts now? He's, he's always been unfunny. He's never been fucking funny. I liked a few things that he did 30 years ago, maybe, on, on SNL, here and there. But fuck Rob Snyder. And now he's, like, gone off the deep end, uh, the right-wing deep end, talking about woke this and blah, blah, blah. And, and, like, fuck Rob Snyder. So in addition to not being funny, because he's not funny... You're not funny, Rob Schneider. You're a fuck. You are an unfunny sack of crap. And now you're like political. Get the fuck out of here. But anyway, he was Fergie in the Judge Dredd movie, and he was awful in that. Um, Towley. People don't like Towley from South Park. I love Towley. People don't like Towley. He made the list of worst sidekicks. Uh, Dawn Summers from Buffy, unfortunately played by the lovely Michelle Trachtenberg, who I love. But yeah, they introduced uh, Buffy has a sister five seasons in. A little weird. Uh, and then there is Stifler from the American Pie series. Um, listen, I love the first American Pie. I back the first American Pie. I think the first American Pie is a great movie. A great movie. In 1999, that movie made my top ten best list. I remember sending the list to uh, the webmaster at the car wash radio station I used to work at. And he emailed me back and said, did you make a mistake? Because you put American Pie on your top ten list. Shouldn't that be American Beauty? And I went, no. Fuck American Beauty. That's a piece of shit. I absolutely meant American Pie because that movie rules. Now, the sequels, they all, they either suck or they're, or they completely suck. But Stifler uh, was great in the first. He's a great character. He's beautifully played by Sean Michael Scott. He's great. 
Um, and uh, so, yeah, but I can see why, you know, like after a while, the sidekicks, all the characters in American Pie became annoying. Uh, Pedro and Napoleon Dynamite, a movie that I've hated from the f moment I saw it. I was never on the hip bandwagon. You know what I mean? I was never a hipster fucking 20-something doofus who was in... Napoleon Dynamite's a piece of shit. It's not funny. It's stupid. And Pedro can eat my ass. Um, and then there is uh, Cameron from Ferris Bueller. Um, everybody in that movie can suck an ass. Ferris Bueller is the most despicable character in the history of film. And Cameron is uh, an incredibly annoying, obnoxious, asshole, dickhead character who allows himself to be completely fucked over by the worst character in the history of film. Uh, so fuck Cameron uh, and uh, in Ferris Bueller. Uh, Mini Me in Austin Powers. Oh, isn't that funny? It's a little guy, and he looks. He dresses just like Mike Myers, who's not funny. And Mike Myers is not funny. And Austin Powers isn't funny. And Doctor Evil with a oh, million dollars. It's not funny. Not funny. Uh, it wasn't funny then. It's not funny now. And if you thought it was funny then, you certainly don't think it's funny now because the shit does not hold up. And the Vern Troyer little dude thing. It, it, it's not funny. So uh, he's a terrible one. All right, who else do we got here? Just we got that. We got Talia. Uh, and, uh, we got okay. Uh, so I'm going to say these two are the, are the worst. Leo Getz in the uh, uh, Lethal Weapon movies, none of which I like. I don't like any Lethal I don't even like the first one. I think the first Lethal Weapon movie is one of the most overrated action movies of all time. It's a piece of shit. It's a terrible movie. Um, but he didn't show up, like Joe Pesci as Leo Getz, didn't show up, I guess, to Lethal Weapon 2. And I don't know how many of them he's in. I have no I don't even know how many Lethal Weapon movies there are. I know there's a TV series. Was he on the TV series? I don't even know. But I'm putting right near the top of the most annoying sidekicks of all time in the most annoying, one of the most annoying film series of all time. Leo Getz, played by Joe Pesci, in the Lethal Weapon movies. Horrible. But number one on this list that I was looking at is uh, Chris Tucker, who I guess played Ro Ruby, Ruby Road or Ruby Rod, I don't even remember, in The Fifth Element. Fifth Element... One of the many steaming piles of shit that Luke Besson has directed. One of the worst directors in the history of cinema. Who, for some reason, has some sort of following. I don't know. Luke Besson has never made a good movie. Every fucking movie the guy has directed has been shit. Um, he may have, like, uh, I think he may have produced a couple. I know he produced a couple of the Taken movies. Uh, but Luke Besson is responsible for some of the worst, most annoying uh, just the most fucking headache-inducing piles of shit movies that you will ever see. And The Fifth Element is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my fucking life. And people inexplicably like that movie. It is a pile of shit. It's horrible sci-fi. It's horrible action. It's not funny. It's not creative. The production design is awful. It's annoying. Bruce Willis is like, yeah, where's my check? And what's her ass who married... Luke Busan, what's ever the fuck, Mila Jovovich, who I only like in Dazed and Confused, and Stone, that's the only other movie I've ever liked her in. She's annoying in it with her multi-pass and all this shit. And Gary Oldman is embarrassing. He was also embarrassing in The Professional, which I think is the worst performance Gary Oldman has ever given, of course, directed by Luke Busan. But Chris Tucker has a special place in hell when he dies. A very special level, a whole wing is going to be saved for Chris Tucker in hell because of this performance that he gave in The Fifth Element. Uh, wacky sidekick, I guess the name is, I don't even remember, Ruby Rod or Ruby Road, whatever. Chris Tucker in The Fifth Element is the most annoying, the most obnoxious, the most unfunny, the most forced, the most punchable sidekick in the history of sidekicks and in the history of terrible movies. So there you go. You got a sidekick that you would like to jump in here and talk about? I'm going to mention it and do it as a topic on my podcast. Again, drop me an email, nickdpodcast at gmail.com. Leave your comments here. Sidekicks, good, bad, indifferent. All right. You, it's a tough job, though. I will say this. You know, we just rattled off a ton of bad sidekicks. Not easy to do. It's easier to be a shitty sidekick than a good sidekick. So know that going in. If you're applying for a job <laughs> as a second banana or a sidekick, not an easy job. It's hard to do. Most people fail. <laughs>